everyone. Welcome to I Went Uncut, an event designer's podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Molina. And in today's podcast episode, we're going to discuss how to have more confidence in your artistry. But before we get started, make sure you follow us, like, subscribe, and share. Now, if you're someone that has ever felt a little uneasy about your design, meaning that you look at it and you're like, I'm not sure if this is good, or you just don't feel as confident. Today, I'm going to discuss many ways that you can apply it into your design and also into your business and even for yourself. Because remember, you as a designer has all the power to make things really stand out and push forward. So first thing you want to think about is knowing your SWOT. And you might ask yourself, what exactly does a SWOT entail in design? You want to know what your strengths are, meaning what is something in design that you are really like amazing at doing? Is it, you know, are you a great draper or are you someone that just really is fantastic at tabletop design? It's important that you know your company's strength because again, that will be something that you highlight in your company. The next thing is knowing your weaknesses. Everyone has a weakness in design and it takes something to practice over and over again. So for example, a weakness may be that time management or is it a lack of staff? It's important that you actually focus and think about what these weaknesses are because even though they may seem like weaknesses, there are things that you're going to improve and also just put a little bit more focus on to improve. The next thing is O, opportunities. What opportunities do you have in design? A big thing is, what is it that you want to achieve? What kind of like services do you want to offer? Who do you want to cater to? Opportunities may be, for example, like I had this student once who saw an opportunity in doing event design, but she didn't know what avenue to take, right? So after further discussion, we realized she's amazing at doing like wedding personal designs because she has a very good focus on working with clients. She loves the whole entire aspect of what marriage stands for. And she saw that in her area, there was, you know, a, a big focus and need for children events, but there were so many other designers focusing on that. There was no one really focusing on weddings. And what I mean by wedding design is doing everything from bachelorette parties to rehearsal dinner events, and then to the actual wedding day. So she created packages that kind of catered to all those different markets and made it into like a one bundle, one stop shop. So if you think about it, anyone who's getting married wants to celebrate every moment. And if you have, let's say, a theme or concept as a designer, you're able to execute it and tell a story through even the, you know, rehearsal dinner down to the actual wedding day and so forth. So it's really important to find the opportunity. And it's something you do as you're self-analyzing and thinking, you know, what can I do? What do I love doing? Or what do I see that there's a need of that no one else is really offering? And that's a big opportunity you may have for your business. So I want you to definitely take the time to think about that because it will help you in, you know, offering services that you never even possibly thought of prior. And then last but not least, T stands for threat. So what are some threats? Maybe it is that it's a saturated market in your area for balloon design, right? And you do balloons. But that's also in a way that threat is an opportunity for you to think of something else you can offer instead of just balloon design. In design, there's so many different, you know, levels. It's like I always say an onion because you peel it back and there's just like different layers. In design, as you keep working, you may think, oh, I want to do these events only. And I think back to when I first started, I thought I only wanted to do corporate events. I only wanted to design for corporate. Uh, I thought it was great, very structured. But as you know, the more I actually started working on these designs, I found that I wanted more emotion out of the designs I was creating. And then I did my first wedding. And after that, I just felt like corporate events did not fulfill what weddings did, like that personal event, that connection, that emotion of working, you know, side by side with your clients, making their special day come to life. It makes a world of a difference. So that's what I mean by sitting down and finding, like defining what your SWAT is, like your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Because the more you know about your business, the more you're able to actually tackle some of the different problems that may arise, or even some of the things that you feel like, oh, I'm kind of over this, I'm bored. Like you wanna shake things up. No, having your SWAT will really help you. 
again because I thought I wanted to do corporate. And once I did the first wedding, it's just corporate didn't fulfill anymore. And I would have never known that unless I, you know, took a challenge and also kind of did like a self analysis. So it's very important that you do self analyze, like what is it that you want to do in design? And it doesn't mean you stick to that only. Like I, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to do corporate. I'm going to be a corporate designer. That's it. And that wasn't the case. And there's nothing wrong with that. But remember, take some time, sit down and think about it. Because again, design has so many layers that you could just practice at something and then you'll realize like, I'm really good at this or that. And that's fine. The next thing is really the most important, I would say, is you need to stop comparing yourself to any other designer or to anyone else who's creating their business or starting off. You know, it's we're such in a different time frame in life now that you're on social media, whether you go on Pinterest, on Instagram, or even Facebook, and you can't compare. And it's human nature, right? It happens. Like, you'll start looking at other people's designs, and you're like, oh, my God, that is so amazing. I, I wish I could design like that. Or, wow, like, I how do I do that? Like, I don't think I could ever do that. And the main thing is you can't compare your journey to someone else's because everyone else has their own journey they're, like, taking. But everyone else has their own, like, trials and everyone else has their own successes and you have your own lane. And sometimes when we're so focused looking at someone else's greener grass, you're forgetting to water yours and grow your own path. And that's what's important when it comes to not comparing. Instead of comparing, I want you to actually get, you know, motivation or inspiration from seeing these other businesses. Because remember, they all started just like you. Everyone starts from somewhere. No one is instantly, you start a business today and then tomorrow it's like an overnight success. It takes time, it takes dedication and consistency. And that's something you have to remember. You know, when you're looking at these different images, think of, wow, like, that is amazing. I should, you know, get inspired and do my own twist on it and create your own type of designs. Be original with everything you do. Don't focus so much on like someone else's, what they're doing, what ifs, ands, or buts. Let that inspire you. And it's very important in design, which a lot of people don't talk about, the fact of collaboration. You will collaborate a lot in the world of design. And that's why it's so important to just stay kind of focused on your journey and not so much of like letting, you know, what others are doing kind of be that noise that keeps you off your focus. Because, you know, before you know it, that, you know, comparing becomes almost like self-doubt and just negative energy that you don't want for yourself. So instead of comparing, take it as an inspiration of, you know, all the possibilities. Because if someone else made it in this business, that's amazing. That means that there's opportunities for you to actually make it in the industry as well. There's room for you to grow because it's such an amazing avenue that whether you go into children events, corporate, uh, you know, birthday parties, children, uh, you know, type of focus, like events or any of those sectors, there's just so many that think about it. Like there's, there's something there for you. So I want you to, instead of you listening to all that negative talk that you might like start getting from comparing, take it as like positive, like, wow, that's where they started. Like, and look at where they're at now. Use that as your fuel for motivation, if anything. And remember that there's room for everyone in this industry. Another thing you want to do is the art of practicing. Practice is so important in design because let's say I learn something tomorrow, like I will be honest, I will never showcase the first backdrop I ever did because in that time frame, I thought I knew what I was doing. But then you look back and you're like, oh my God, no, like when you're a beginner. And I always love hearing when people say, oh my God, you're so fast at this, at design, like you, you do amazing and you make it seem so easy. And I'm like, that's not how I started though. Like my first backdrop took me forever to do. I think it was like 50 minutes. And on top of that, my first backdrop, I got tangled in the fabric and it fell. I was so embarrassed, but in that embarrassment, I kind of laughed things off because I'm embarrassed. Like, what am I going to do, cry? <laughs> so I laughed it off and I redid it again. And obviously I could tell it wasn't even, like there's so many things looking back now. And what I realized that day after I left, 
I need to practice. I need to be better. I need to be more proactive. I, I started timing myself when I did the backdrops. I started trying different techniques that would work well for me and, you know, really learning how to work with different fabrics. It's really important to practice because whether you're doing tabletop design, florals, you know, backdrops, even working with lighting, you have to practice because you practicing will make it so you're able to book more events in a day because, you know, taking two hours to do a backdrop is not good because then you can't book many events to design that specific day. And that's something you have to think about. And that's why I love and I'm so excited that um, Event Decor Direct has decided to partner with us and actually extend an offer to all of you that are listening and watching uh, with a discount code. And if you don't know, Event Decor Direct is a one-stop shop for all things design products. From florals, to draping, to custom props, to dance floor wraps, and so much more. And you can visit eventdecordirect.com and with the special discount code I went on cut, you receive 11% off. You heard me right, you get 11% off. And all you have to do is check out their website. They have so many different type of props, material for designers that it is amazing. And what's even better is the fact that you will find whatever it is you need for design at that one-stop shop. It's like your go-to. So make sure to check it out. Again, the discount code is IWED Uncut and you get 11% off and it is exclusive to all of you that are watching and listening. So thank you so much to Event Decor Direct because you definitely have made practicing for me a lot easier through my years. So back to this, building a design process, which takes us into our next point. It is so important to build a process of how to go about designing. Have you ever been in that situation where someone tells you, I want you to design my entire wedding? And you're like, oh my God, that's, that's amazing. You say that in front of the client, then after you leave, you're like, oh my God, how am I gonna design the whole event? Where do I even start? How many like staff members do I need? Like, like how to execute this? Like how to, like you ask so many things and you get even so flustered. And I remember that feeling and I get you. So that's why I'm here to tell you, you need to have a design process. It'll make your entire design like roadmap easier. And with the design process, that means that you need to definitely have kind of like an A to Z plan of what you're going to do and how to go about attacking it. So that means if you're doing the ceremony, the reception and the cocktail hour, you need to break it down into measurable design elements. That means that for the ceremony, you want to create a list of what exactly it is that you're going to do in terms of design. Like what is your responsibility? Once you do that, you're able to break it into subcategories of what goes there, like in terms of products and, you know, the different type of like duties that are in that section. And this will help you kind of also breathe a little bit, because if I look at a whole design as a like entire big picture, I'm like, oh, my God, this is like a huge event. 500 people, I would like freak out. So when I started dividing it into like measurable components, which is what I like to call it, like actually compartmentalize everything, I started thinking, okay, ceremony. What exactly am I doing a ceremony? Like what are, you know, the different design, you know, elements that the client wanted for that section? So I list it out. Then from there, I'm able to subcategorize like, okay, uh, you know, aisle way, um, then, you know, florals, fabric divided into those categories. And the same thing I would do for cocktail hour and reception, because again, having that process will help you also make sure to not forget products because it happens. And I don't want that to happen to you. It is the worst feeling when you get somewhere and you're like, Oh my God, I forgot like all the back, like the backdrop fabric and you, or maybe you brought the wrong size. But if you would have had your checklist, you would have known that, hey, that's missing before you leave, let's say, you know, your warehouse or, or whatever it is you're working from, you would know that. And instead of having to drive back, deduct time for setup and everything, and I don't want that to happen to you. So having a design process is going to make you more confident in your design because you know that you have everything at hand and you should always take extra. Let's say if I'm doing a design, I'm not just going to take exactly what that design recipe requires. I'm going to take extra in case something breaks, you know, while 
on the way to the venue or let's say I forget something, I have extra of it. So always prepare for more than even what you picture or you thought it would be needed. Now, when it comes to the whole entire design process, you need to trust the design process. You need to trust everything it is that you have in place for your business. So that means you know how you thought about, okay, all the sections you're going to design, then you need to trust it. You need to practice it because all the practicing you do, you know, the processes you put in place, you know, really having a roadmap of your SWOT, you're having a solid system for your business, which that will exude confidence because again, I know exactly what it's like. And I get you if you guys ever feel like this or have felt like this, which happens is you, you do a design or you're working with a client and you're not confident. You're like unsure and you're nervous. Like you, and you kind of like exude that nervousness. And it's very important to remember that if you have a system in place and you've done your due diligence, you're going to have everything in order. You're organized. You know, you're able to think quick on your feet. You're, you're able to kind of see what problems will arise before they even happen and you have a solution for it. And that's why it's so important to trust the design process you have in place and implement it. And, you know, the same thing that I, you know, if I have a process now, when you do it so often, it will be literally like following a recipe. It'll always be the same. And you'll see that your designs are great with timing, that they're effective, efficient, and that they're executed like perfectly. And you feel even better about it because you're able to, you know, extend that to the client to, you know, have them trust you for their special day or their event. And you did things because you have everything organized for your business. And I want you to remember that when you have a business, you want to have a solid foundation because again, if you don't, then a shaky foundation is literally going to crumble. But when you're building each step by step, especially in your business, you need to have confidence in your artistry and trust the process and design learn from your mistakes stay focused stay consistent don't pay it you know don't be focused on what other people are doing focus on your growth and your path because you're building your own empire step by step but it takes you so remember go for it and i will see you in the next podcast episode make sure to share like and thank you so much for listening and watching today's podcast